everyone. Um, we are recording and I have to do this recorder as well. And we are good to go. Two seconds. All right, this is the call to order. This is the German Village Commission hearing. It is Wednesday, August 3rd, 2022, 111 North Front Street, second, second floor, room 204. It is currently 4.07 p.m. The next business meeting will be Wednesday, August 24th, 2022 at 12 p.m. 111 North Front Street, second floor, room 204. The next hearing, Wednesday, September 7th, 2022, 4 p.m here in the same location. Both the swearing staff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, friends. Good. Morgan Graff. Oh, oh. You swear to the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Thank you. Morgan Graff, thank you. Thank you very oh, much. <laughs> we'll get in this in the swing of things here in a second. All right, now we'll move to the introduction of commissioners present, starting the left. Uh, Ned Thiel. Anthony Hartke, Chair. Karen McCoy. Brett Cole. And we any items for public forum? No, this time. There are no items for public forum. Moving on to the staff approvals, which begin in the agenda on page. Page nine. Eight or nine? Yeah, bottom of eight. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from 628 Mohawk Street. Thank you. I'm good. I'm good. Good as well. Now we're looking for a motion on the approval of minutes from last meeting, July 6, 2022. Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the uh, staff approvals. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. And we'll move on to the applications for certificates of appropriateness. The staff recommended applications item 1 GV 22 08 012. I think we missed approval yeah. of minutes. That, yeah. that approved the staff recommendation yeah. or motion exactly. for the staff recommendations. Exactly. We still need to move for the minutes. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve <laughs> the <laughs> meeting <laughs> minutes from last <laughs> month. Is there a second? On second. That one? A second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Let's have it. It's a weird place. It's a weird place. <laughs> now we'll move ahead to the COAs. Uh, item 1, GV-22-08-012, 612 Mohawk Street. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Jeff Metzinger. Thank you, sir. Proposed work description applicant proposes to replace the asphalt dimensional shingles on the front porch roof with the EcoStar beveled edge and fire slate with a seven inch exposure. Color of the EcoStar to be the free port federal in a wide spectrum blend to match existing slate roof as close as possible. Work includes removal and replacement of rotted double two and a half inch Dutch lap siding and window trim. It includes unoriginal aluminum soffit and metal fascia wrap on the west facing table as new. And will we will be replaced with new two and a half inch pine, sanded plywood for the soffit, and primed and Halloween wood for the fascia and window trim. 
Paint the siding, saw fixation, window trim to match existing. Staff analysis after staff review of the application, portions of the original siding on the east gable end does appear to be in poor condition. It also appears that there has been past alteration to the window trim as indicated by the photos, but has been confirmed from a past COA from 1994, stating that the exterior trim was to change to match a more appropriate profile. The porch was also approved for rebuild of the current design in 1994. At the past August business meeting, commissioners asked staff to compile information on which properties has the EcoStar synthetic slate shingle been, have they been installed? From what staff could find, properties include 225 Lear Street, 220 East Sycamore Street, and 245 Jackson Street. Staff recommends approval of any clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with conditions. The conditions being to preserve as much original siding within the east gable end as possible in lieu of replacing all of the wood siding. Also, if the original soffit is underneath the aluminum for the original beer store. If original soffit has been removed, staff recommends to be uh, replaced with either tongue and groove one inch by three inch pine or Georgia and Pacific ply beam traditional in lieu of the proposed plywood. Their proposed work is consistent with city code 311611, standards of alteration number six. And number nine. Thank you very much. Anything else to add? No. Questions, comments from the commission? Are you okay with the recommended changes from staff on this? Absolutely. On the top? Are you willing to amend your application to I am. do say something? I don't have anything. Really. Yeah, okay. My only question for clarification um, is the window trim that you're putting back. Um, are you intending to match the trim that is there or have a different style of trim around the window? We were going to match what's there. Okay. Question I had. I will move to approve uh, GV, item 1 GV 22 08 012 612 Mohawk Street as amended by the act. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? I have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to head to item number two, GV-22-07-025, 804 Yeager Street. Let the record show that Commissioner Thiel is not back on. Uh, do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. Please state your name for the record. Brian right. Stanley. Thank you very much. This is continued application post work description. Applicant is proposing to remove the existing 25 foot maple tree located in the rear yard. The tree is being proposed for removal before it grows too large and poses a risk of nuisance to home and neighboring properties. The following is taken from the unapproved July 6, 2022, German Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioners asked when the tree was planted. Commissioner McCoy stated that the tree does not appear unhealthy, suggested that the applicant can reduce the canopy with certain trimming, that issues with wires are a typical problem with canopy trees. She stated that typically the removal of trees has been approved and passed due to physical decline. Commissioners would need to have a better understanding of what tree or trees would be going back before voting on removal. The tree that the applicant is proposing to plant is one to two Zelkova Zerata in place of the maple tree. Um, staff does not recommend the removal of maple trees since there does not appear to be current issues. If removal is approved, staff does recommend the proposed replacement trees since the proposed have been approved in the past. Basis of staff recommendation is 31-16-13, standards for site improvements, letter A. Anything else to add? No. Questions, comments from the commission? Does our tree expert feel about it? Well, our tree expert is not in favor of taking down a um, healthy tree. Uh, I do think that if we were to agree that um, it would be removed, that the idea of replacing it with two would be helpful, but that's, you know, that's a tree of probably 12 inch caliper. It'd be replaced with two at best three inch caliper trees, I would think. 
So it's going to you know, be a while before it contributes the same value that the existing tree does right now. And I, I can't, I can say that I don't fully understand um, the total reasoning for taking, you know, what's where the two trees are going back that's going to present a significantly different condition in the future. Yeah, the uh, two trees would go back into the same space there, be spaced appropriately, given their height goes to 24 feet and their spread is 18 feet. Um, the coverage and colliding into our neighbor's property and some of the other areas of our own patio uh, would be mitigated. So we'd still be looking to have the same coverage area up there, but have a much more contained presence of a tree right back here. So can you explain to me what the removal before it grows too large and poses a nuisance risk the home and neighboring property is? You're putting two trees up, I understand, less coverage. Yeah. What's the issue? What's the issue with the trees as, as, it, as it is? It, yeah. Well, one, it is colliding with the wires that are running in the house, which, yes, that is a problem in the city. Always going to be. Uh, the second is that it is already extended beyond our property line into our neighbor's property. That certainly can be trimmed, but we're going to keep taking back those areas. Third, we want to introduce additional native species to the area so that we can start to help with the biodiversity of the area. And having that tree is going to prevent that. Having the two smaller trees will still provide balance to the canopy, but also allow us to have some of the other backyard uh, goals that we want to the property. Any I would just add to that that maples tend to get 100 feet tall, as we know, which is why they're nice shade trees. Um, our lot is not such a size that that big of a tree would, it would be all free in the backyard by the time it matures. And that's bad. For us, it is. We would like a garden. We have a garden back there where we have vegetables. We want to continue that. Mm -hmm. yep. Me for comment again. Yeah. Well, comment more about. I, Sorry. <laughs> I think I still think it's um, it's possible to manage this tree. Uh, I think it can be. Um, you can remove lower limbs, which will let more sunlight to the ground, and you can reduce the canopy. Just um, you know, you can take a certain percentage of branches out of it. So, and, and the issue that I have with it, I, I mean, I commend the fact that you're talking about wanting to have diversity and um, certainly historically in German Village, there were vegetable gardens in people's yards. So all of that is consistent. I just, I, I have concern about the precedent that it sets to take a healthy tree down, which has been our standing to not, you know, to not support that. Um, does it, does it, obviously this tree is not super old though, right? I mean, this is not an age. I mean, how old do you think the age of this tree is based on the sun? Maybe older than I'm thinking. <laughs> well, it's got to be, I mean, it depends on the size that it was, was put in, in, but I'm going to say it's, you know, it's probably 18 years old, 20 years old or something like that. I'm just, I'm guessing that from the. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, as the applicant said, as it matures all the way, it becomes a very tall tree. This isn't. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about taking down a hundred foot. Well, right, right, tree. right. I think it would all be yeah. very <laughs> difficult. Difficult, and I, 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 my personal feeling right now, where I am, I feel a little bit more okay because of you know, coming and trying to put, put something back mm -hmm. that makes sense. Right. Uh, allows them to use their yard. It's not on the street. It's not a very, it's an old tree, but it's not a very old tree. Correct. Yeah. Um, that's kind of where I am with it. So, from that standpoint, I'm 
okay with it. And I think that we're not setting a precedence in that we're not. Each case is considered individually, right? So I'm, I'm okay with it to consider the, the merits of the individual case myself. That's okay. where, where my head is right now. I appreciate the input. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments? We'll put it to a vote then. I will move to approve item two. GD-22-07-025804 Yager Street. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Nay. Oh, the motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Moving ahead to item number three, GV-22-07-027, 757767 Macon Alley. And if you all please raise your right hands. And you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. And please state your name for the record. Haley Whitman. Thank you. Jonathan Hill. Thank you. Nathan Samson. Thank you. Word. Proposed work description. Um, this is a continued application as well. Just one. Proposed work description is new construction. Construction of a one and a half story addition to connect the two separate homes at 757 and 767 Macon Alley. The addition will be set back from the existing alley. The proposed addition will be wood or boral, board and batten siding. Will include appropriate skirting trim and corner boards. The addition will have a low slope dormer on the rear west elevation and a small dormer with a gable roof on the side to break down the scale of the connection. Exterior will include GAF slate line shingle roofing, Marvin signature ultimate clad windows, metal OG gutters to match existing, and classic rock molded block foundation. This also includes variance recommendations. Various recommendations are CP 33-32-25, combined side yard, reduced combined side yard from 6 feet to 7.1 feet, uh, CP 33-32-21 frontage, preserve the existing non-conforming building E that is 1.1 foot over, um, over lot line and right of way, and CC 33-32-26, minimum side yard board, reduce the minimum side yard committed from 5 feet to 2.1 feet. The following is taken from the unapproved July 6, 2022, Urban Village Petition Hearing Minutes. Commissioner Field would like to take his comments back <laughs> from last meeting about altering the 1987 house. He does not object to connecting separate properties. It happens all the time, and they have a history of doing that in Urban Village. He thinks the connector should be architecturally subordinate to both structures being connected. The connector is of sufficient massing to both structures and hardly subordinate to either, but the detailing is somewhat subordinate to the circa 1900 cottage. As an addition to the cottage, it would be more acceptable, but not as a connector. Should be treated as an addition to the cottage and visually pulled back for the 1980 structure with a minimal element making the connection, like a gasket. It'll make it easily reversible later uh, with other commissioners' agreement. Commissioner suggested to make a gap between the proposed addition and the 1980 structure. Pulling the addition back would allow the corners on both structures to be exposed. Commissioner McCoy suggested adding a foreground landscape in front of the addition. For it to recede and become subservient. She asked applicant if the brick area in front of the addition is intended to still be used as parking. Applicant stated yes. Commissioner Harkey stated his concern is how the applicant is connecting into the older structure. The connection to the older structure goes against the guidance from past applications. He is not opposed to connecting two separate structures, but it comes down to how it engages the principal older structure. Commissioner Harkey will be willing to sacrifice the stringency about building off the original rear addition. He suggests to possibly redo the roof of the addition and to add on the, onto the side of the addition, which would not be typical in lieu of destroying the roof line of the existing structure. Commissioner would suggest coming off of the rear addition to connect to and to not let the floor plan drive the architecture, but to let the architecture drive the floor plan. Commissioner Durst stated that the minimum connection would be to build a three foot hallway off the old addition and connect it over and create a new opening in the 1987, 1987 building to get the upper floor connection. Commissioners agree to keep the corner and roof line of the historic structure exposed. Commissioners do not have an issue with encapsulating the corner of the 19, 1987 structure. Commissioner Harkey said that if the addition is pushed back, it would hit a lot of concerns from commission, as well as allow to for additional landscaping and allow applicant to keep the parking space. Take read it. <laughs> At the August business meeting, commissioners requested that a new 3D rendering. Uh, 3D renderings be submitted that have been submitted um, to closely match what was previously submitted from the past hearings. 
Staff notes that the change from the applicant only includes the addition of a gasket off the 1987 structure. The applicant is continuing with the design to encapsulate the original corner on 757 Main Alley, as well as the removal of a portion of the original roof, including the removal of the stored brick to install a new doorway. This applicant may set precedence for the commission to allow a combination of separate lots and connectors between two separate properties. This combination would also be a loss of a single family home in the neighborhood and redefine the context. Staff does not support the design of connecting the two separate properties. Staff recommends that the commission offers feedback on the design and recommends to continue the application. The basis of recommendation is 311611 standards of alteration. Number one, number two, and number 10, and German Village guidelines, alterations to existing structures, connectors, pages 94 to 95. Connectors, particularly connectors between historic buildings, are not encouraged. However, a connector may be improved if the visual impact is minimal and creates an enclosed porch like effect between two buildings. A visible connector between a historic house and garage is strongly discouraged. And uh, number two, three, and four of that same page for the connectors. Right. Anything else to add? Uh, yes. Thank uh, you, Fresh Airs and, and Morgan and staff. Uh, in addition to the uh, shortly after you noted the gasket comment, um, there was an error, I believe, in your statement about not encapsulating the corner. We've now pulled everything back so that um, the corner is not encapsulated, uh, most importantly, on the historic structure. Um, but then successfully, we're also not doing that to the more recent structure. I think it's a, a nice architectural gesture for both of those. Again, more importantly for the historic one, but uh, we have successfully pulled that back. Uh, we, we do thank you for pushing us on that because it, it's super solid in a better design. Yeah, and I think your black and white rendering has helped verify that. It, it, um, it reads in the elevations as well, uh, and then also the the rendering with the three, um, sorry, the six color renderings. Second one down on the right shows that. It, so everything's been pulled back from that corner. In addition, that allows that, you know, we're not expecting as much of that historic brick. The framing of the roof has been simplified to be more in line with what a normal would impose on that. I think it was mentioned in the last hearing as well, you know, with the uh, you know, minimizing the impact sort of on both structures and working with a little bit of a narrative where, you know, this is an addition to the older structure with a gasket to the newer structure and shrinking down that footprint to allow those two masses to separate from each other visually. Um, when we look at the how the roof of that addition connects to the older house. You know, a lot of that, um, as you see in this, this section, is the you know, overframe of that roof where the actual opening to between the addition and the original cottage is barely or less than uh, impactful than a, a dorm with two windows and towards the back of the house as well. I think that uh, Commissioner Harkey, your comments about be more uh, conscientious about you know, leaving historical material in place and exposing those corners um, is something that we wanted to push forward, um, leaving as much in place as possible, shrinking down those connections to have what we're hoping is a gentler touch on, on both buildings. While still meeting the sort of the programmatic goals that we have uh, and balancing those out in a, in a way that makes sense and that uh, produces a, a a design that fits into the neighborhood, fits into the alley's gate, um, as well as uh, maybe add something to the streetscape versus being too uh, overly stringent. We want to meld the two. We want it to work aesthetically, but also address your comments uh, about the sensitivity to the historical structure. Questions, comments, and permission? I 
first, I, I thank you for those renderings. It's helpful to understand it. Uh, so we'll give the background levels just to see it looking up. So that's okay. And the coloring ones. Um, personally, I think I've had to come to terms with I really wanted modifications to the non historic structure because I really don't think it was done in a great way, but I also have come to terms with that's probably not fair to this application to try to do. Um, and so I think you've responded to our, our, our turn, what we've asked for, and I think the design is better. Appreciate the, uh, the uh, efforts. That's all I have. Should feel the comments over there. Yeah, I'm, I'm all due respect to historic preservation of this. Um, I think this is a better solution than, I mean, there's talk about combining properties and adding house and all that stuff. This is a better green solution in the fact of adding square footage by using an existing building than if we were adding this as a whole new addition to the back of the um, original building. So I think that's all good. I have no problem with that connection. We've done this kind of stuff before. The coverage of one window um, has been a topic of conversation on many, many projects with many, many architects with a connector, a gasket, whatever you want to call it, to a whole new addition on the side of a house. We've had, you can't take two windows, but you can take one window. We've had those conversations. They're only actually taking one of the second floor. The first floor is staying pretty much intact. It's kind of a minor impact. Um, And as long as this could be demolished in the future with a minimal impact, I think what you're doing the roof line, as you said, is probably no more than what we basically do with the dormer. I, and I agree with that. I, I, I came to the same conclusion when I looked at it. Um, the one question I got for you is the, the little gasket piece, is that all glass from top to bottom? And could it be glass from top to bottom? It's set up so large window, large window on each floor with just knowing that there's a floor plate in there, trimming it out as such, but trying to make it as transparent as possible. Can it be a spandrel piece of glass? I'm looking for the same reflectivity oh, from top to bottom. So it reads, doesn't have any as minimal architectural detailing as possible. Right, right now on page four of the application, you can yeah. kind of see it through the tree. Yeah. yeah. You can see yeah, it. Yeah, there's yeah. elevation, yeah. Just, elevation on page six. You know, we talk about a gasket being connect, but being as minimal as possible. Can you make that all glass from top to bottom? Could, and I'm not saying visual glass, yeah. but reads, reads as a reflective surface. Could it be um, all glass, but just more than one unit? Yeah, yeah I have no problem with that. Okay. I'd say just because of the height. Yeah, no, I get that, yeah. Um, but that opaque panel, I'm, I'm making a glass strip. Right. Make it a, a stack of three, let's say. Yeah. And it could be visual on two. Yeah, and a spandrel glass on the third. I don't think that's that detracts from what we're trying to do. It would, and inside it wouldn't show up. Yeah. Okay. I I think I'm I'm I won't come a long way. I think it's pretty good. I really appreciate the extra effort you guys did on pulling it back on the back side. Yeah, I noticed that. And I thought, wow, nice. They noticed the parking lot's gone too. Just that side note as well, and Morgan probably covered it, but with this uh, revised design, none of the variance requests have changed, and they're all technical in nature, basically related to the existing structures. Is the variance recommendation a part of the application, or is it a We'll have to um, split them, split them, and then go separately because there's a recommendation right in the third okay. I just didn't see that. Okay. Any other comments or questions? I think it's a good solution. Like where it's going. Right. So, um, for the record, you are amending the application as noted by Commissioner Deal's comments. Okay. Black, but the trans detailing on the gasket should be vertical and continuous, although perhaps not one piece of plastic. 
possible business. Sorry if I interrupted you. You're good. So we need to split this into A and B. We have a need a motion to split to A and B, and then motion to each separate piece. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to split item GB 2207027 into A and B, A being the variance recommendations and B being the new construction. Yep. Second. Any questions on the motion? We had a second for Bishop McCoy. Uh, if there are no questions, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Ayes have it. That motion passes. Is there a motion on the variances? Should we? That just for order of the way you like to do things, we should probably vote on G first. Well, I was going to go for the variances first because they're just stand, they're in place standing things. Yeah. That was otherwise, if there had been one, got it. I'm with you. That's why I did it. No, no, they're, they're in place due to the, due to the existing yeah, conditions. Yeah, that's that's why that's why I did it. Yeah, I was I was I was surprised. I expected you to do it that way. Yeah, not, I went that way on purpose, so we would do that one first. Gotcha. Um, uh, an item GB twenty two oh seven oh two seven A variance recommendations for seven five seven and seven sixty seven Macon Alley. I move to recommend the rec the variances. Second, just because we should read these in the variances are CC three 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 two dot two five combining side yard reduce combined side yard from sixteen foot to seven point one feet. CC 3332.21 frontage preserve the existing non conforming building E that is 1.1 feet over the lot line into the right of way. CC 3332.26 minimum side yard north reduce the minimum side yard permitted from 5 feet to 2.1 feet. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. It is recommended. Uh, Mr. Chairman, on item GV 2207-027A, 757 and 767 Macon Alley, I move to approve as amended by the applicant for the gasketed piece or whatever you want to call it between the addition or what is touching the south structure is uh, glazed from top to bottom. You have that, Morgan? Um, I do have a question, I guess, for those uh, glazed pieces of um, those will be the Martin signature and climb wedges as well. Yep. So basically, instead of the opaque panel in the middle, it'll also be placed. Yeah. Is there a second? <laughs> All right. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Aye. Eyes of them have it. <laughs> um, Motion passes. Since it has passed a staff request just to um, know what um, standards and codes um, to support that approval. To the codes. So. References for the codes. It would take me time to figure them out. I think uh, part of standards for alteration 3116.11 item 2 distinguishing characteristics of property should not be destroyed. The removal alteration of historic material or state architectural features have been avoided when it were possible. Item three, that each property shall recognize as a product of its own time, alterations that have no historical basis, and we shall seek to create an earlier appearance shall be discouraged. Item four. Uh, which is the changes that taken place over time may have required significance in their own right, so shall be respected. That's in terms of uh, the newer building. It's cleaning. Item nine, 
which is a contemporary design for the alteration. Uh, should not be discouraged. Such alterations not destroy significant historical, architectural, or cultural material, and design is compatible with the size, scale, color, material, and character of the property, its environment, and surrounding properties. Item 10, which is the one about uh, future removal, is not impaired the integrity and form of the structure. 12 doesn't apply. As far as the standards for new construction, because it's an addition, it's an alteration plus new, uh, 3.16.12, item A, new structure should look new, reflecting contemporary design standards using contemporary design elements that relate to existing security properties surrounding the structure, both or building height with mass, mass and proportion affect the degree of compatibility. Item C, which is the heights from the street being compatible with adjacent, adjacent contributing properties. That should do it. Yeah, it was good. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to say thanks. So you would like I did, to add anything I did else. vote against, but I think those would be the ones that Thank you. Supported. I thank appreciate you. that. Appreciate that. Just have that on the record. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, moving on to the new applications, item number four, GD-22-08-013, 382 East Beck Street. And if you both please raise your right hands once you're settled. And do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth? If you're already on the record, please state your name, please. Adam Burdick. Thank you very much. Morning. Proposed work description applicant is proposing to replace the existing flat C metal roof with new EPDM rubber roofing. Work to include installation of tenors drip red drip edge. Let me say that tenors red drip edge along the perimeter of the porch roof and new flashing will match existing profile and to be tenors red as well. They propose to replace the rotted five three eighths inch wood crown around the eave to match existing and for the trim to be painted tricorn black. Staff analysis when application was initially received on the 22nd of June, staff have reached out to applicant recommending to replace the metal roof with a new flat seam in lieu of the EPDM proposed being proposed. If the applicant and owner would agree with that recommendation, staff would be able to approve since it would be like for like, but with the new material, the application would need to go to commission for review. At the past August business meeting, commission had asked applicant to supply the profile of the crown molding that they are using for replacement and if the profile matches others within the neighborhood. They asked applicant to clarify if they are replacing the fascia board as well, and if they will need to rebuild the box cutters on the porch roof. Applicant has supplied photos of the proposed molding profile to match existing. They have also responded, stating that they are not planning to replace the fascia since it's in good condition, as are the current box cutters. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications and materials to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate with the following conditions. That the original roof be replaced with flat seam metal roof in lieu of EPDM, EPDM rubber roofing. The proposed work is consistent with City Code 311611, standards of alteration number six. That's number six. Sure. Anything else to add? Right. Questions, comments from the Commission? So we're not doing a flat seam roof? Correct. We're um, doing an EPDM fully adhered to the existing roof. So it'll, it would maintain the integrity of the existing roof. Uh, should, ever, should we ever decide to uh, do a flat seam roof in the future? Um, and then doing uh, tenor thread flashing to match what would have been. What color EPDM are you proposing? Black.
just doing a quick look at the guidelines to see if we have any guidance on this. If you look through the photos, you can see that at some point it was coated with asphalt. You can, there's evidence of that around the um, the drop in the box cutter. So in essence, uh, in lieu of doing uh, like silicon coating, that's why we're proposing the EVP. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like it's a lead seam solder on top of it. Correct. Make sure I heard you appropriately. You're going to leave that existing flat seam in place just because yes. of the PM. That here directly to that. Correct. We're not doing uh, insulation board plates or screws that would actually penetrate through. We're just doing uh, EVDM adhesive. Basically taking it into the box cutter out and over, and then like, you have like a metal through. Yes. Yeah. And then the, the new crown. That's correct. And everything will stay painted black, so the trip will be the trip will be black. Everything will be black. Uh, so it was originally tenders red. Uh, personally, I believe that matching with the tricorn black would be more appropriate, uh, but we proposed it based on models that originally. For the drip edge, you're talking about the one. Uh, drip edge and the flashing we yeah. imposed it as tenders red. Yeah, but sorry, this is that you did say that I forgot. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if uh, commission was good with black, I think black would. Uh, Max the rest. I of think I'd like red if it was originally red. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. That's why. <laughs> as much as I would like to keep putting soldered, let's see, metal roofs on stuff, you walk on them, you pop them, and they leak. I also I like that is that they are keeping the existing one underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. I think that is definitely a mitigating circumstance for me. Keep it, keep it there, preserving it in its current form. It's better than ripping it off and replacing it straight with So that's what gets me there. All right. Well, I don't hear anybody else. I'm going to move to approve item four, GV 22 08 013302 East Back Street as submitted and clarified in the next one. Second. Any questions on the motion? We'll make the note on the record that the applicant is maintaining the existing roof underneath, which could be allowed to be brought back in the future. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, I say have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, moving ahead to item number five GV 22 08 014 713 South 6th Street. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth? I do. And please say your name for the record. Daniel McClellan. Thank you. Morgan. Proposed work description install full masonry landing and steps that consists of brick and Kansas City limestone to cope. These steps will be installed to replace previously removed wood steps. Install a new 450 square feet stone patio with brick border, first minute drawings, wood steps from back door and patio, brick patio were previously removed by the homeowner. At the past August business meeting, the commission asked applicant to clarify if they will be using permit based or concrete. Applicant has responded that the patio will be installed on concrete. Staff recommends approval of any on clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with the following conditions that the patio be installed over a permeal base in lieu of concrete. Basis of staff recommendation is German Village guidelines. These exterior considerations walk, sidewalks, driveways, patios, and parking lots, page 125, 126, to number one, two, and four. Yeah. Anything else to add? Yeah. Questions, comments, and conditions? 
or do you good with the staff recommendation to do it on a permanent full surface rather than on concrete? Due to the movement and an existing walkway that's already in place, um, we were planning on just adding to that so there's no future shifting. You can see the previous one has just been all over the place. So we're trying to avoid future maintenance for the owner. Typically, we've not approved concrete trying to maintain permeable surfaces. I, I would I would argue <laughs> if you maintain it and prep it properly, you should have obviously less than that. That's pretty that is pretty extreme. I mean, the biggest issue, I mean, that we're trying to avoid is, is the thickness of the materials. So bricks are turned important are the stones an inch, maybe an inch and a half. Um, supplying a concrete base that's thicker under the stone and, and deeper from the surface below the brick, we can, you know, these two materials can work cohesively together. As well, we can install it on mortar mortar bed opposed to a joy set system. Be interested in hearing the other commissioner feel about that. I think you can even work around the depth of the two or you could um you could potentially pour an edge, you know, a, a curb edge or use a you know, use a double layer of paver edge, I guess, to because you would have to deal with the difference between the differential between the two materials. I'm looking for a more permanent solution for them. <laughs> Well, but if that's what we need to do, dry set it. I would prefer at least a border of concrete for the brick. I think being installed on mortar. I think a border can be done that would hold it in place. Seems reasonable. And then I would recommend that you remove the concrete walk under the field area of the pavers. Absolutely. Yeah. I would concur with Commissioner McCoy's statements. So, looking at the pictures, you, you do see the the bulge in the brick. It, it appears, looking at what you had already pulled up there, is it true to, to state that there's concrete under part of that? Just part of. Which is probably what ended up causing the bulge. It was settling on one side versus hard surface on the other. It also, yeah, I was say, I don't think there's any base under those bricks. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. <laughs> no active base. So, yeah. I'd, I'd be comfortable with with that solution, the concrete border in the base, and, and I will point the item two in the general build guidelines does specify laid bed of sand as part of the guidelines. It would be sand. And So, would you like to amend your application to state that? Second. Any other questions or comments on the application? If there are none, is there a motion? Move to approve item 5, GV 22 08 014, 713 South 6th Street, as amended by the app. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? I just have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Right, moving ahead to item number six, GV-22-08-015-909 Mohawk. Once you're settled in, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record. Yeah, we're we'll on. Morgan? Tree was removed because it became a hazard to the four tenants living in close proximity where the doors opened to the yard. The main trunk of the tree was dead and rotting, including the larger branches. Arborist invoice included stating the tree was no longer viable as it was a hazard concern. This application is in response to a code violation. The tree that has been removed without a COA was between the two double unit dwellings on Mohawk. Staff had initially reached out to applicant after receiving the application. So they asked if they are planning to replace the removed tree with a new tree in the same location or close to the same location. Staff has not heard back as of yet. 
Staff recommends approval, then you have clarification, space minute taken to staff, review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with the following condition that a new tree be planted in a similar location. Basis of staff recommendation is 31-16-13, standards for site improvements, letter A. You. Anything else to add? Nope. Questions, comments from the commission? Question on the table is as staff had mentioned, is, is there an intent to put a tree back? Um, we were actually planning to put grass back. And because the, the areas between the two buildings are planning grass there. Okay. Stinkweed is a new one to me, Karen. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about stinkweed either. <laughs> But the condition of the tree does look bad. Yeah, it looks terrible. <laughs> so yeah. I agree with that. But um, I don't really understand why a, a replacement tree is not being planted. Is a lack of replacement a deal killer? For approval in your state. Uh, certainly a recommendation. I mean, I would like to see a replacement tree. Is it a deal deal killer for me? Uh, I guess I would say no because I don't think we have any grounds that says that you have to replace the tree. The tree. Unless, yeah, that's not in the guidelines. Right? That's what we try to get. But yeah. I would like to see a replacement tree. I mean, I would say, you know, we're not opposed to doing that. I mean, probably would look better with the tree, so we could explain. Would you like to amend your application to include replacement of a tree? Sure. We can. Okay. Any other questions on the motion? If not, it's their application. If not, is a motion. Uh, motion to approve item six, GB-22-08-015909 Mohawk Street, as amended by the applicant. Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against. I say as it. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving on to item number seven. GV-22-08-016921 Mohawk Street. Let the record show that the applicant is still on the record. Morgan? Sorry, go ahead. Um, <laughs> proposed work description. Tree was removed prior to the CEO being issued. The tree removed was within two feet of the foundation of the home. The tree was operating the brick and the curb. Staff had initially reached out to applicant after receiving an application requesting further information on where the tree was removed on the property, as well as to clarify the species. At the past August business meeting, asked, um, commission asked applicant to indicate which tree was removed. Staff recommends approval with any all clarifications and materials to be submitted to the staff review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate since the tree is in such proximity to the foundation. Basis of staff recommendation is 31-16-13. Standard of site improvements, letter A. Anything else to add? I mean, the only thing we had that we didn't actually include that I thought about was so this particular house was actually vacant for 20 years and then we bought it about three or four years ago. So that particular tree just started to grow at some point and then it was left to grow. There was nobody caring for it naturally because of the proximity to the house. If someone had lived there for during that time, I'm sure that no one would let a tree grow within a couple feet of the corner of the house. Because it's really literally growing out of, you know, it's out of the brick. And it's right near the corner. And so I just think that had there been somebody living there during that time, that this we wouldn't even probably be here today. Except that they intentionally bricked around it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, well for, that could have been intended. Yeah. Questions or comments to the commission? There are none. Is there a motion? 
Motion to approve item 7 GV-22-08-016921. Second. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? I just have a motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Moving ahead to item number eight, GV-22-08-017, 629 Mohawk. So Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself as well. Right. One second, please. Is there an applicant here for 629 Mohawk? Put a pin in that one. So I have to recuse myself. <laughs> We've been headed to item number nine, GV-22-08-018, 35 East Sycamore. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I did. And please state your name for the record. Yeah, it's uh, Tim Diverge. Thank you. How are you? Proposed work description is a variance recommendation request. The variances listed are CP3332058, area district lot width requirements. The existing house does not conform to the required 50 foot lot width. New structure will not conform to the required minimum lot width of 50 feet to erect building. CC3332038, G, private garage. No carport or detached private garage shall exceed 15 feet in height. The proposed detached garage with habitable space will be 27 feet. Six inches tall and is within the average height of the surrounding structures. CC 3332 38H, private garage, requires habitable space in a garage to connect directly with habitable space in a dwelling. While the applicant proposes a habitable space above a detached garage that is not connected to habitable space within the single unit dwelling. Staff analysis the design was previously approved in March 2022, COA number GB 2203014. At the past August business meeting, Commission asked staff to ask zoning to define the habitable space as indicated in CC 3332-38H, private garage. Staff had reached out to BZA and had received a response about the variance. BZA has responded stating that if sleeping accommodations are planned for the space over the detached garage, they would be considered habitable space. If the space is just a den or a personal office, then wouldn't be classified as a habitable space. Per the code provision for garage height, in the historic districts, the garage could be taller than 15 feet and have a den or the like above it. But if the owner wanted sleeping accommodations, then a council variance would be needed to allow habitable space of the detached garage. Staff recommends the commission recommends approval uh, to the BZA as submitted. Basis of staff recommendation is the proposed work is consistent with German village guideline zoning variances, page 139, number four. Or, sorry. Land use variance is deals changes in use, expansion of non conforming uses, and increased density for residential units allowed in its zoning district. Anything else to add? Um, so, for the area uh, lot width requirement, uh, that's just simply a cleanup of kind of an existing uh, condition that was there. So, when the original structure was built, uh, the lot did not meet that requirement. Um, for the private garage um, elevation, uh, that's already been reviewed and approved. Uh, so we have to add the drawings back. It's in uh, kind with all the adjacent structures. Uh, so we would not be adding a new taller structure to that streetscape. Um, and then for the private garage, um, there's no kitchenette within the space. So it cannot be listed as a separate uh, apartment complex or anything of that nature. And then one question, uh, Morgan, mm -hmm. on the staff analysis at the very end, um, BZH responded that a council variance is needed to allow habitable space. So this is going to be recommendation. So it will be going to BZA as well as council. Um, that the correct statement. I, I mean, that is the statement from um, the zoning officer that I spoke to. Um, yeah, this verbatim of what was in the email. So mm -hmm. okay, just wanted to note that that. In case the applicant was not aware of that requirement, you might want to double check. This does have habitable space. Mm -hmm. And the call for a, uh, a guest room and a bathroom, but no kitchen. And I can double check with CC as well about that. The council Any questions, comments from the commission? My only comment is I don't know how we got here without having zoning variances. Done at the same time as the design approval. And I swear to God, we asked who was representing this project at that time, 
if there was any zoning requirements and we were told no. I believe that was the case. We had not been told we needed to apply for a variance at that point. Which means to me, you didn't go to zoning before you came here. I, I don't know the answer. That's, that, that's exactly the answer. Is it? Okay. Yeah. That should have been done. Okay. I'm not going to vote not to ratify them or recommend them, but not happy. Understood. Other questions or comments? There are none. Is there a motion? On item 09 GB 2208 East Sycamore Street, I move to ratify or recommend the uh, zoning variance as requested. Second. Any questions on the motion? Make sure that we make a note that the middle space includes a guest room and a bathroom, but not a kitchen. Just yes. keeping with our previous. Yeah. All right. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you very much for your time. Moving ahead to item number 10, GV-22-04-026A, 595 South 3rd Street. Do we have eight here? It has before. Is there a 629 Mohawk? Okay. All right. 595 South 3rd Street. Mono? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we need to get to that. If you please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the troll truth? Sorry. Been a rough day. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And please state your name for the record. Thank you very much. Let's see. Sorry about that. It's a right question, but I'm having not to say too. So <laughs> we're in all low. We all are. Yeah. yeah. All right, Morgan, do you want to read your part? Of course. So proposed work description application was approved during the April 2022 hearing. Applicant has submitted final design packet for ACO staff review, but has returned with additional materials. For the commissioner for the commissioners to review that were not seen at the hearing. The approved materials are the proposed expansion of existing patio area to include patio service bar, exterior fireplace, and new fountain fixture. Approvals include construction of a new wood fence trellis service area enclosure facing South Third Street. Um, sorry, that will house dumpster recycling linens that has been updated in the site plan and relocation of main entry door to interior framed addition to accommodate ADA accessibility. Remove existing curb cut and concrete sidewalk to be replaced with brick pavers to be hearing boom pattern. The additional materials that were not seen during the hearing include the installation of a front of an entrance enclosure with metal arch and plexiglass covering, removal of existing door on frame division with infill wood panels to match existing exterior, removal of existing door on the north elevation on the original structure with infill brick and new window, as well as the patio bar covering, which will sit in board of privacy fence on north elevation and will not attach to the existing building. There will be a proposed extension to the previously approved service bar counter that will not attach to the existing building. Staff analysis. Staff had requested the applicants in an updated design package to create a cohesive submittal to be reviewed with final approval by staff after commission approval during the April hearing. Updated material packet was submitted by applicant on June 16, 2022. Staff had reviewed the application where changes were made from the approved design in April, which included installation of a trellis within the wood enclosure and a second gate on the wood enclosure. Changes also include the relocation of the metal entry gate location and provided further clarification of the proposed entry wedge. After discussion with staff, applicant has made the changes to not include the trellis, second gate, and move the front entry gate back to the approved location. Staff does not have, sorry, staff does have concern about the covered entryway since it was not clear during the original submittal that the covered entry would be consistent of plexiglass between the metal arches, including the removal and infill of entry door on the north elevation. Staff recommends approval with any all clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of the certificate with conditions that the applicant remove the plexiglass from the entryway arch, limit the proposed hanging length fixtures in the existing tree to the first floor level, and maintain existing doorway and door on north elevation of the original structure in lieu of infilling brick and installing a new window. 
If door will no longer be in use, applicant fix the door shut and add small sign or small plant materials in front of the door to show that it's no longer in use. Basis of staff recommendation and German village guidelines. Exterior considerations, site lighting, street furniture, pools, balance, and gazebos, page 122, number three. Keep lighting devices, simple design, and honest in size. German village guidelines, entrances and doors, page 58. If an entrance will no longer be used, avoid removing the door and filling in the opening. Leave the door in place and fix it shut. A small sign or plant materials can be used to indicate that another door is to be used. Always make such alteration work as reversible as possible so that doorways can be used again in future with minimal work. And it's also somewhat consistent with CC 3116.12, standards for new construction, letter A, G, H, and J for the metal entrance, um, cover entryway, trellis entryway. Yes. Great. Anything else to add? The first time we submitted, we had the plexiglass that's shown, but I don't think it was clearly conveyed. Um, but there will be vegetation on top of that, so I don't know if that sways your decision at all or if you still like us to remove it. And then for the door that's shown currently, we're going to have like a half round booth right on the interior of that. So if you need us to keep that and fix it shut, that shouldn't be a problem. Any other questions, comments from the commission? First things first, plexiglass. Covering on the walkway. Any thoughts and comments on the plexiglass cover? It requires further discussion. I think plexiglass is a roofing material, seems inappropriate. It does not form with the, it does the form of an architecture that relates to the context of the existing building on the south side. But it's totally alien to anything we've got in the village, anywhere, anyhow, whatever. Um, planning on top of it, I don't think that's going to fix it. I think you guys need to relook at if you want to cover the walkway, something that's more appropriate to the village. Okay. And plexiglass on metal arches, no way. Um, I think the gate configuration changed also. Is that not true? The location certainly, but I don't remember it dipping down in front like that. Um, I from what I looked for the drawings, Commissioner Beal, it looks to have remained the same. It was okay. the location was pushed forward. Okay. And um, after yeah. discussion, it was moved back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think in this. Elevation, that, and that could be it. Yeah. yeah, it didn't show up as much, but yeah, so plexiglass cover runway, just not appropriate. It's very alien, doesn't it's not contemporary, it's not historic, which is not necessary to duplicate something, but I, I don't. Just not there. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations? I, I would look at what existing uses of, and run things. I mean, to me, an ancillary thing like that on the back of a house or a structure or something is typically it's just had a shed roof. A low shed roof. Yeah. A structure. A structure currently, there's uh, a canvas overhang yeah. in three sections. And it, and it could be that also. You could. My I think a shed roof, you could do lots of things underneath that shed roof for lighting and stuff like that that would. Do what you want to do. I think it's great that you're doing that sequence of entry from the gate to your front door. And I don't remember that before because I thought it was, I thought it was really weak. We want to saw the designs before, but didn't comment because it wasn't where you wanted to go. But I think it's a low shed roof. You can do something with the columns that supported that kind of stuff. Or as Anthony said, a canvas solution. Well, and as Anthony said, I think there are three existing yeah. there. Yep. You look at the existing fixtures. I'd be in support of replacing with a single long one. That's an option. If you yeah. Three. If you want to go a different route, have something more solid surface. I think there's an opportunity for that. I think one of the things that the the current design of that half round is doing is it's engaging below the top of the window and the wall, which just looks awkward through there from really a store perspective. Really awkward. So I think it just it takes a little bit more designer eye on it to to come to the solution. Yep. Um, I think that, unless if I'm wrong, please let me know. But I think that's the one thing that'd be holding up a vote on this application. Um, if you'd like, you can either remove it and reapply for that piece. So I guess we can't really still be outstanding. Yeah. So we could vote to split that out into its own application. We can approve the rest and leave that one open and continue it. Is there an option to have that separated and removed at staff level review only? Since it's I would no. say, yeah. I was the one option to, to staff for approval, I believe, it is putting back awnings in the same style. Right. You just do it yeah. the same exact thing. 
replacing an awning for an awning, I think that's easily staff approval. If we start altering into something else, then it's. But, but even in that case, Anthony, the awnings that are there don't consider the rest of the design. Yeah, and it's a little hard to true. To think it I think they'd have to think it through. Actual true. renderings. Yeah, yeah. And then if that's the case, would you feel comfortable approving the other items on the application without that being? Yeah. Yes. No, no, and I and I think the applicant needs to have a conversation with your owner. Yes. What kind of do they want something that's kind of temporary with an awning, or do they want to go ahead and make something more permanent? Yeah, I'll have to have another conversation. Yeah, and see what they want to do moving forward. So, would you like us to separate that out and vote on the rest, or do you just want to continue the application as it stands and be on the top of the agenda, front of the agenda? Let's get everything else approved, and I'll come back in for it. Yeah, so that's yes. And I think for the record, we also need to know that the applicant did. Um, Agree with to modifying the door being the fixed door. So that yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. I think part of this also that goes back to the arch over the gate. And how that's bracketed into the building and into the build. I think that's also have to come out. For you to address in a better way. Do you want to remove this one gate entirely? No, no, Just have it adhered. okay. Talk about the arch that yeah. forms the end of the piece that's got. Is there an arch? It's all part of it. There's it's a, all part of the trellis. Yeah, there's a trellis. But it's bracketed to bracketed. all the, the steel. Yeah. Okay. So it's bracketed on both sides. So the gate being fixed to it needs to be part of that. Yeah. Gates per se I have no problem with, but I think you need to rethink that whole rest of that whole assembly. Okay. Gate design, gate location, you're good with. It's just the tunnel. Yeah, Morgan's telling me I'm good with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then I can move to separate the application DD 22 04 026 A into an additional. I will do that, Morgan. A, A, and A, B. Um, I'm really not sure. I haven't had this instant yet. Uh, so we'll call it A A, which is all of the items except can for. I, can I make a recommendation? Yeah. Let me just make it B. Make an item B and C. Move the arch and the gate to B. Leave the rest in A. Got it. Go to A. Yeah. So leave this as A and then remove the arch from A and make a separate B for just the arch. Yeah. And troll. I will say there is already a B. Um, because of the variances. Is there a C? There's not a C. So the arches will be C. <laughs> the arches will be C. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And then yeah. I'm going to move to approve. Oh, wait, we have to, we have to vote for that, yeah. that first. Right. So we have a motion on table to separate. Is there a second? Second. Any questions on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Seven. Now you can make a second. Yeah, yeah. motion to approve uh, GB 22 04 026 A uh, as amended by the applicant. Is there a second? Second. And I just want to clarify what was amended. It goes with what your recommendations were, Morgan? Yes, that will cover um, the door stays in that place. That will cover the door. Um, we did have concern about the proposed hanging light fixtures um, in the rendering. It's on the second story. We're recommending to keep them on the first floor um, just for the you know overall appearance of the neighborhood. So I don't know if you would like to include that uh, in that amendment. Are you okay with that? Yeah, that should be fine. So that the okay. amendment would include then all of the staff recommendations. Yes, except for the plexiglass. All right, which is that of course. C. C. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so we have an amended application. Yes. Is there a motion on that? We did have a motion. Second. We had a second. Are there any questions on this amended application? Take the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. And then for item C. So I will move to continue. Uh, GB-22-04-0026C. Is that second? Second. Any questions on that? Yes. Yeah. Any questions on the motion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote there. I did. I said I'm sorry. Thank you. All right. Uh, I have it. Motion passes. Thank you.
Yes. And B is not on the table anymore, but that was our yeah. That was for bearings recommendations yeah. that has already gone through. Uh, real quick, is any applicant here for item number 8629 Mohawk Street? 629, come on up. Sped by it, we'll come back to you here. And Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from this. Result. I need to recuse myself. Thank you. If the applicant, once you have settled there, if you please raise your right hand. Okay. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. Do. And please state your name for the record. Steve Graham. Thank you very much. Okay. Proposed work description, install new landscape planting and front yard for submitted design, modify existing stone wall by removing section of the wall, parallel public walk down to brick height of entry of front entry, replace existing brick patio and rear yard with new pattern bluestone patio, an updated layout that will have a poor concrete base, rebuild existing stone, stone steps using using existing materials and supplementing with new matching veneer as needed in the rear yard. Replace existing pergola with new treated and cedar pergola and updated location. Install new AC screen. Incorporate new sandstone curving to define planting beds. Install new landscape plantings and rear yard for submitted design. Staff had initially reached out after receiving the application to request applicant to send a section drawing of proposed stairs and elevation drawings of the proposed relocated pergola and AC unit screen. Staff has received the updated materials and they have been added to the supporting materials for this application. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff for review and approval prior to issuance of certificate with the following condition that the patio be installed over a permeable base in lieu of concrete. Um, the basis of this recommendation is German Village guidelines, exterior considerations, walks, sidewalks, driveways, patios, and parking lots, page 125 through 126. Number one and number two, stating it should be laid in a bed of sand, sometimes a concrete base is installed beneath the sand bed. And number four. Do you have anything else to add? I believe so. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? Are you okay with staff's condition to do it on sand? Yeah, I mean, we would do two different types of compaction gravel. Right. Um, the reason for not using concrete is just permeability water runoff um right now looking at the at the site residents in the garage take up a large chunk and then the rest of this stonework is going to be um taking up the rest of it and the germ village guidelines specifically state it should be laid in a, a bed of sand not on a basin of concrete base so we're going to incorporate surface drains to take that water away would that be something you guys would consider I, the reason i'm asking is because my client would really like to be able to power wash the patio that sort of thing. It's a lot easier to clean and maintain with mortar joints versus you know sand joints. Historically, well, historically mortar joints would not have been used in, in village. Uh, and two, using drains it's still going to put it under into a runoff situation. It's going to be dumped into the street into the, into the city sewers, uh, as opposed to some kind of on-site storage collection. If there was some kind of detention system, I think it'd be a different conversation. But not sure that your your applicant your homeowner would be looking to do that probably i would say that i've never seen a concrete one get approved since i've been here so and you've been here longer yeah and, and some in the past some applications that have been approved with a concrete base um the the planting beds were specifically designed to hold the water in this case there's there's a curb all around all the paving, so it's just going to trap the water and mm. force it to run off the city. So, with that, so with that, for the record, are you okay with sending the application to take the concrete out? Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Yeah. Um, only other question I had there was a, a note on here of art focal point by the owner. Um, that's just intended to be below the height of the fence, correct? It's not going to be. Yes. I come back to bias in the past. <laughs> All right. Uh, then I will move to approve item 8 GV 22 08 017629 in Mohawk Street as amended and clarified by the applicant. Uh, I will second the motion. <laughs> Good uh, are there any questions on the motion? On your own motion? None. Uh, All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Against? Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think we've been down to two.
<laughs> and it happened once. <laughs> I mean, technically, I think that Jeff said we would be down to one commission, right? Although you can't get a second, you can't get a second one. You gotta have a, you gotta have three to get to get the the form, and then one can recuse. Yeah. Got it. All right. Uh, moving ahead to item number eleven, which is the conception application GV dash two two dash zero eight dash zero one nine. 551 555 City Park and 552 South Pearl Street. Let you two get settled. We'll let the other commissioners come back on. Let the record show Commissioner Thiel and Commissioner Porter back on. And when you're settled, if you please both raise your right hands. Uh, not necessary. You have both already sworn in the previous. <laughs> Makes it easy. And pressure Morgan to go. Um. So it'll be a little long winded as well. So bear with me, everyone. Uh, proposed work description is for 551 555 City Park Avenue and 552 South Pearl Street. Uh, 555 City Park Avenue alterations remove existing old world bazaar entry and bay window addition and restore historical masonry openings as best um, as application determined. New metal and glass windows and entryway are proposed. Repair masonry are required on all of all of on all elevations. <laughs> Replace uh, Old World Bazaar storefront entry on South Pearl Street with historical openings in line with previous 1950s openings. Four shed dormers are proposed for the middle section of the building. Replace damaged slate roof with new raised seam metal roof, 18 inches face seam. New masonry openings are proposed on the north side of the building facing the interior of the parcel. Metal glass windows and doors proposed for these openings. Change of use from commercial to residential. Renovation of the interior for residential use. Step back single story uh, connector proposed between this building and um, I did not change that, so my apologies, but only for the 551 City Park Avenue and not the 552. Remove masonry walls and bench in the right of way uh, in front of the building of City Park Avenue. 551 City Park Avenue alterations. Replace all historical siding with trim with new to match. Replace windows with new Mormon windows from improved windows list. Maintaining all existing opening locations on the City Park facade, including dormers. Remove rear additions made over the years to the original structure. New slate roof is proposed. Renovation of the interior. In addition to the rear of the original structure, including screen porch, paint color to be determined. 552 South Pearl Street alterations. Repair existing masonry as required. All elevations. New slate roof to replace existing asphalt shingle. Replace windows with new marked window from improved windows list. Maintaining all existing openings, locations on the facade, as well as north and south elevations. New front entry door selected from historical style. Renovation of interior. Maintain of off street parking spot. Proposed iron fence along South Pearl Street, including gate for parking spot. And new four panel solid wood door. Proposed connector. Proposed connections between 555 City Park Avenue and 551 City Park. Bind two separate properties into one single family home. Connectors will be wood frame with flat roofs. Um, or connector, Dutch lap siding to match dimensions of the existing six inch Dutch lap siding in the 551 City Park Avenue, which will be replaced in kind. Paint color to match the final selection of paint color for 551 City Park Cottage. Variance recommendations included CC 33-3218D lock coverage to increase permitted lock coverage from 50% to 60.5%. CC 33-3221, front yard setback city park to reduce the front yard setback from 10 feet to zero feet, which is existing. CC 33-3226, minimum side yard north to reduce the minimum side yard permitted from five feet to zero feet. CC 33-3226, minimum side yard south to reduce the minimum side yard permitted from five feet to zero feet. CC 33-3225, combined side yard to reduce the combined side yards required from 12.5 feet to zero feet. CC 33-32. Point seven, required rear yard to reduce the required rear yard from 3,162 square feet, which is 25% of lot area, to 961.15 square feet, 7.6% of lot area. And CC 3391.11, voluntary discontinuance of non-performing use. Approval will be required, but we'll need to confirm with BZA. <laughs> Staff analysis, the following is taken from the unapproved July 6, 2022 German Village Commission hearing minutes. Commissioners are concerned about what is historic and not historic on the trolley barn. I'm not sure what would be appropriate. They would need more documentation of the front and rear elevation. Commissioner Durst stated to restore the 555 City Park Avenue structure to what can be documented or has been documented. 
suggested to not restore based of conjecture, but off of documentation of what the building looked like as a trolley bar. They suggested contacting families from across the street that may be descendants to look at family photos to find evidence. Commissioners are concerned with the lock coverage to not lose open space and with being above 55%. Commissioner Durst stated that the additions off the rear of 551 City Park Avenue appear to be old. They suggested to investigate the little bump out a little further. Area could be historic based off the 1921 Sanborn map. Commissioner Durst has no objection with the trolley bar becoming a residential property with South Pearl Street property as a cottage. She did have a problem with the southwest corner of 551 City Park Avenue uh, being engulfed by the proposed connector, which Commissioner Harkey agreed and to keep the corner exposed. They suggested to keep most of the existing south wall as well to make it easier to go back to what was originally there instead of making an open floor plan. Commissioner Thiel asked if the openings on the north elevation were original. Applicants stated that only two were. Commissioner Thiel stated that he did not have a problem with the proposed new openings on that elevation. Commissioner Harkey stated that when the applicant proceeds with an exploratory investigation to look at where the pilasters are because it appears that the existing facade may not be original. Commissioners indicated support for the proposed roofing materials for all three structures. Commissioners would not support or sorry, would support the proposed curb cut since it would not be taking away from the street parking. And since there probably was a curb there at one point, they do have concern with the attached garage portion. Commissioners to get suggested to investigate the ironclad description on the 1901 Sanborn maps could indicate swinging metal doors instead of exterior finish. At the past August business meeting, the commission requested applicant to submit a design intent statement on why the 1960 facade would be more appropriate in lieu of when the trolley bar was built. They asked if the applicant considers the work to be remodeling or restoration and to provide a justification for why the existing bay window is inappropriate and needs to be removed, replaced, and proposed infill. Commissioner stated that there is a lot going on here with the three separate build buildings, with the trolley bar being a significant of three. They also requested if there has been select demolition done to the interior, if applicant has found any evidence, support, or refute what they are proposing to provide the information for the hearing. They have also requested applicants to identify which variances are for existing structure and what variances are the new work to be done to the property. The letter of design intent was included with the application um, for supporting materials so those in the packet. Staff does not support the design of connecting the um, two separate historic properties to make a single family dwelling. Staff recommends the commission should offer design feedback that can be utilized by the applicant to further refine the proposal for review at a future GBC meeting. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.11, standards for alteration, number 1, 2, 4, and 10, and German Village Guidelines alterations to existing structures, connectors, pages 95, 94 to 95, number 2, 3, 4, and German Village Guidelines new buildings, garages, now buildings, page 113, number 2. No action is required. Thank you all. Yes. <laughs> all right. Anything else to add? Um, yeah, I think I just want to summarize um, some of the updates just from the comments from last hearing. Um, you know, in consideration of um, and going back and talking with our client, uh, we've modified uh, the overall site plan um, and deleted what would be the physical connection between the Pearl Alley Cottage and 555 City Park. Um, and just use the space, the other spaces that we have proposed, and it would be closing that porch that we had on the rear side, which would be the east side of that cottage. Um, I think that, you know, the commission had also, well, the other thing that we adjusted in this was we've modified uh, the, con the proposed connection between 555 and the cottage on City Park um, to be much, much smaller. It's between the two buildings, uh, facade to facade, not um, enveloping the, what would be the historical footprint uh, or the rear corner, the south west corner of that cottage. Um, lot coverage was a question uh, also before, and we actually just this last week got our updated uh, survey information, which we try to include here. Um, I think that existing lot coverage for this uh, for this property, we broke it down by parcel initially on our site plan, or just about 57% or over 57% as it stands 
And it's really what drives that is the trolley barn taking up nearly the entirety of that south site. Um, with our proposed additions and looking at this holistically, it, it's uh, 59 point something percent. We've made some just uh, increase in coverage was 2% overall for the square footage of the, of the combined parcels as a reference. Um, I think that, you know, in the showing the larger openings on the interior courtyard, I think that, you know, we have uh, some additional questions um, just about the facades that we want to discuss today. Uh, we've not yet reached out to the neighbors across the street um, just in preparing this. That's uh, something that we plan to do, just have not done it yet, just to see if there's any evidence. You know, we're working from the evidence that we have in hand that's collected from the German Village uh, Historical Society, uh, as well as, I think, there's a book and some photographs of what the facade looked like. Uh, that picture that we included of the car wash. Um, the closest we could get was late 50s, early 60s from the person who used to work there. Uh, and also looking at the Sanborn mass and talking to Bob Lovrezich just about uh, age, you know, photo the photographic evidence we have, uh, especially of the west facade, and trying to understand the hipped versus gable ends of this building. Um, the last evidence we have of a hipped roof is the 1951 Sanborn map. And then it jumps uh, maybe eight years or seven years forward to the photograph that we have in the car wash, where it showed as a gable end. Um, and so, in with what we have in hand, we're trying to work with uh, the evidence of the apertures in that facade uh, based on the car wash. You know, in this, what uh, seems to have been the case over the years as well is that the or better or worse, the, the facade has been modified uh, for whichever use it currently was, you know, at that time, you know, up to 1965, and the old World Bazaar was uh, renovated, and uh, that project was done. Um, so I think, you know, with with what we have at hand, that's the uh, what we are trying to work with and trying to um, develop into something that you know, is contributing to the streetscape, uh, but, you know, in ways is also being somewhat consistent with the age of the evidence that we have. Um, the, um, the variances requested on this, I think there's three requested variants that are not technical in nature relating to the existing buildings. Um, the ones that are being requested that are not technical in nature is simply the lot coverage variants, which we've talked about 57.48 up to 59.54% uh, coverage with the proposed design. Um, the real yard uh, of this, once these uh, buildings are combined, um, we need to, since we took away the connector, we need to talk to the BZA again to understand how they view that and if keeping that a separate parcel may be advantageous uh, from a rear standpoint, even though it's owned and treated under the same guidelines, but also just the change of use from commercial to residential. Everything else relates to the existing structures and just the current zoning code uh, overlay on those, as every, most buildings in the Village, uh, they're over or very near uh, property lines and coming down on our side yard. Very much up. Questions, comments, and questions. To, to clarify, I think I understand the west elevation of the trolley bar not being modified. That's correct. Uh, it's being modified um, just to take away the door, current entry, and bay window that's back there. It was done as part of the old board bazaar. Um, to uh, I was talking about the west side. Yeah, correct. Okay. correct. It, it's sort of like it. Is this the west elevation or is this the east elevation? That's the east elevation. Okay. 
Is that the one you're talking about? I was talking about the west elevation. Yeah, exactly. So it's sort of set back in where the door, entry doors are, and then it's pushed back out where a window is that was into one of the shops that was in there. Um, and so we're taking that back to maybe more of a facade that is representative of something that fills oh, that that, uh, that facade, which was noted as always timber uh, framed in the Sandborg maps. There's one note from 21 about an ironclad, I think, uh, gate there. The other thing that came up uh, is the back, the construction on the back of the City Park Cottage that shows up, I think, in 1921 on the Sandborn map as an open porch, is at least the way that's delineated on the Sandborn map. Uh, and, you know, that there may have been a porch, but there was a porch back there. The current bump out that exists within that footprint is a cinder block uh, foundation bump out that probably at one point encapsulated that when or was rebuilt and they enclosed that space. Um, and uh, up till 1951, it was a, a, noted as an open porch. I, I would just stay, I mean, what I'm having a hard time with is the Old World Bazaar was opened in 60, 1965, 65. And so those modifications are over 50 years old and they're contributing. And so the modifications to the west side are not based on any evidence other than a modification. The modifications to the east side are based based on something, uh, but it's not necessarily more or less contributing than what it already is. And you know, unless it was a true, let's restore the trolley barn and try to actually get evidence of what this was originally and do a true restoration project. I'm more apt to preserve things that are part of the existing fabric and, and really just try to leave them as much as possible like they are because they're contributing at this point, unless we can come up with a real strong reason not to. Yeah. And I'm not saying we can't, but that's not there. No, 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 it's a great question because it, it's, there's been a lot of modifications. Certainly what we see now is the result of the last modification, right? Of a certain time to, you know, part of, I guess our approach in this, so I guess, uh, our, how we're starting to deal with those facades in some ways, uh, certainly is understanding the historical nature of it. Certainly some of it is um, programmatic. Some of it is also the, relates to the idea that, you know, this has been, since it was built until now, kind of says a commercial structure. And so what, what movement do we have as we convert this commercial structure into a residential structure that, that you know, is part of the, that neighborhood? Um, I, I understand your point entirely. Yeah, and I, I, I think just trying to find the a, a, a line to walk perhaps. where we're doing something that is, you know, good and appreciated and contributing to the neighborhood um, as we consider this conversion. Yeah, I would say that programmatically on the east side, really what what is existing, you could keep without really changing the program. The, the garage is, of course, a whole other challenge um, there. But again, it's hard. I'm having a hard time with it not knowing, you know, knowing that what is there on the, on the west side is likely was built in the 60s, which is contributing, you know, it's considered contributing time period and 70 years now yeah and, uh, and not commenting on whether it's good or bad it's contributing right it's the point right it's now part of the historic fabric of the neighborhood mm -hmm. and i'm having a hard time getting to a place to modify it unless it was this is the only trolley barn left at German Village. Let's figure out exactly what the trolley barn looked like on the outside and make it look like that. Well, you know? the, the one photograph we were able to find of that facade from the, I think, Mr. Society of the Library of Congress. 
Actually, no, the point was called yeah, called it was called um, is the lower left, which is attributed to the wrong gear uh, because it has a, a gable end, uh, which was in place till 1951, that showing a gable end noted as 1947. And it's just wide open, right? And well, those are rolling uh, metal uh, grills, like rolling metal shop front grills. There's a number of them in sequence. Um, so for if it was used as a what uh, warehouse or structure, at probably around that time, um, probably used for just opening up and getting things in. Now. I'm sorry, which building is the so building? it's the cottage is directly center. Okay, right behind that so it's directly to the right. Of directly to the right. That's right. Oh, okay. I see the. I see. Yeah, it's sort of funky. So but it's just open. It looks like the best I can say. I think that there's there is a gable end on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, t timber frame, I think, with an opening below. I can only look at it. Looks like this was gable end here. You're talking about. Right? Yes. There was some kind of major beam and just roll up doors there. Yeah, that's good. If I can make a request, um, since a lot of this discussion is based upon visual evidence yeah. um, and when we make the PDFs, they all get pixelated. Is there a chance we can distribute some higher res photos through the through staff to us so we can take a look at that? Definitely. I, I think, I don't know, they might be a little bit better out of the crystal clear, but it, <laughs> whatever helps, you know, everybody understands, um, you know, in as part of this as well, um, transitioning this from the commercial to residential, you know, there's certain requirements for off street parking and adapting that. That seems the natural side, of course, to uh, find a solution uh, for them. And that's, you know, partly the reason of uh, considering that facade uh, be more of the access opening, historical access opening to that building. Yeah, it's a little tricky because you're, 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 I'm sorry for dominating the conversation. You're, you're walking a line with like, well, you know, on the west side, we're going to try to make it look like the a little bit like the trolley barn used to. On the east side, we're going to try to make it look a little bit like the like the like the the car wash did previously. And it's but those two elevations that are there now, we know are contributing at the same time. Mm -hmm. So if you were to say, okay, well, we'll leave the east side like it is because we know that's contributing, but we do something to the west side, then you're taking something off contributing. But it's it's a really tricky. Problem. Yeah, maybe that's why we're saying change things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> yeah. It right. is true. I mean, that's your, your, yeah. That's why you're landing there. <laughs> but I mean, it is. It is a little bit tricky, and um, just you know, understanding uh, the perspective as well as um, how we may apply current, you know, German village guidelines. Uh, to this funky situation, yeah. right? I mean, although that facade has been there for a long time, and I understand that, you know, the, the building has changed, you know, for each use, and we want to find the right balance for that. Well, what, what I will say though is what, what I personally rely on, and I think we kind of rely on, it's what's the what what was done in the contributing period, and the fifty years is the contributing period, and, and uh, so it's it's right, wrong, good, or bad. Um, that is considered contributing architecture, and we got to be very careful removing contributing architecture. Ed and I, we don't always agree on things, but that's something we typically agree on. And we fought to keep uh, things that people thought were falling over, you know, because they they were contributing. So, yeah, because you know, there there's been uh, just a lot of searching, I guess, for that for both sides. Um, Outside, of course, of the of the neighbor contact, um, you have all sorts of historical training websites, street car websites relating to Columbus. This one that was just such a secondary to the primary that was on uh, High Street, mm -hmm. and even taking her to the main one or like a, the larger one, yeah. like over in uh, Front Park. Um, There's one documentation or data yeah. worth Columbus to do. Yeah, and I think we talked a little bit too about we found another old. Uh, Trolley car barn that's out off of Fifth, or by the railroad tracks, way to the airport. It's similar size um, and similar detailing, actually, 
uh, that has been modified as well. I think we included some pictures of that in our first round. Okay. Yeah, um, but it's tough because this was the back. City Park was the historical yeah. rear of that. Um, we did uh, look into uh, Commissioner Harkey's question about that original structure that was noted on the St. Moore Mass from 1891, and you know whether it's you know brick consistency, detail consistency, pilaster location, foundation uh, uh, construction um, is all consistent to the City Park all the way back to Pearl. All the, the divides that are shown on the San Juan map mm -hmm. are not. The evidence that's in place there was it was, it was likely taken down to build this. Gotcha. Yeah, so all, all the, the brick banding and everything is all consistent across the okay. I wanted to answer that question. Sure. I'm going to shut up now because I've been dominating. Um, <laughs> we, we can circle back to that because I know that that's a tricky one. But um, is, can we ask if you know if there's there's any questions about uh, any of the portions of the proposal at this point, we can help to clarify. I would, I guess, to address staff's comments, we can kind of tackle that. Um, but one comment they mentioned was staff would not support of connecting historic to historic. Um, looking at the guidelines, um, it's Connectors, three types, historic to historic, historic to new and new to new. Um, between historic to historic is, is not encouraged. However, it may be approved if the visual impact is minimal and creates an enclosed porch like effect between two buildings. Um, and obviously, house and garage is strong, strongly discouraged. Mm -hmm. um, so, as opposed to not being encouraged, it's being discouraged. This is a weird situation, obviously, because it's a trolley barn, is that a garage? I don't think so. <laughs> um, but I think it's worth mentioning at least. Um, and I think the applicant has attempted to address some of that um, connector, setting it back, uh, respecting the corner. I'm going to comment on that. Go right ahead. I have no problem with the doorway vestibule between the two buildings, but I don't think a shower is a connector. That's an addition. I don't think that's right. I think you need to pull the shower back into the building and let that open space run all the way through and probably like make that connector that you're showing that little piece all glass. Essentially, the connector is more like a little hallway. Little just that little, little piece there would be just fine all in glass. Freeze away, huh? Yep. I, I do. Yeah, sure. Take it down a little bit. You get only a half. And, and, I, and I think you can make the case for lot coverage by looking at each of the three buildings. Probably yeah. about 100%. The sure. piece on City Park, what it would be on its piece of property when you're done, and what the one on Pearl would be. And that's and on page 14. 14. Back down. Did you? Okay. Yeah, in our submission. Just to I thought you had, but yeah, yeah. That's, that's how I would look at it. And I, yeah, I understand that. Page 14 shows the breakdowns. For okay. Um, I do appreciate the, the 552 South Pearl being completely disconnected. Yeah, that, that helps the case to me. If it's yep. you know, one versus the other, I, I can get to one. I, I think that has a really great thought comment on that piece there. As as, as minimal as we can touch, yep. the better it's going to be. Yep. And, and with, I agree, for a programmatic standpoint, what that was, it, it works well if it's not connected. Um, any, yeah, they're just besides the same thing, the Charlie Barton facade questions. Because I have a few follow up questions on that, but I want to make sure we address anything else as well. No, I don't have any issues with variances either. Makes sense. And I want my comments to the facades. I think that's to me, that's the biggest. Yeah. Elephant in the room, um, and uh, talk about the death, but the city park facade got, got to figure out. And, and to Mr. Foley's point, 
one side versus the other side, they can even speak the same language as opposed to picking and choosing which language they want to speak. Um, not sure if there's been any interior demolition, exploratory stuff looking to see if there's any evidence left on the inside. We pulled the front facade, we've pulled back and gone up into the attic and looked at the brickwork. And basically, you know, the brickwork reflects not even what you see here, because the brickwork was done slightly differently on the inside, but those openings, we're trying to look for some other evidence, but where those openings are seem to kind of obliterate whatever it was there before in some ways. I do think that there's probably some thing to investigate further un underneath that awning, but we're going to be careful about that on the inside of something, as far as the brickwork and on the city parks. If you looked from the outside in the footprint of that awning bump out, mm -hmm. is there any kind of remnants of foundations that may just have been bricked over on the outside as opposed to them digging out the foundations that might have been in that yeah. thing? Correct. No. And I think that's the same investigation we want to do on the rear side as well. I would recommend We're that. just talking to our team about that today. Um, I agree, just understanding what that may have been. Um, to that, to the Pearl Street side, I will state that looking at the photos of what's there currently in, in the, the stone banding, uh, I'm, I'd be willing to bet that, that whatever gate work, whatever facade, and again, can't really tell the photo here, my guess is probably in set back from that front face because they wouldn't have had that banding covered up by even beams at them. I don't yeah, think. I agree. I, mean, I, I think that that's something to finesse further once we dive into or as we develop that those facades a little bit. There's no evidence of anchoring, which, but that could be buried inside for, to, yeah. uh, for hinges or something. Um, one question, I, you know. We've sort of worked our way through the Oklahoma City Library, Journal of Historical Society, somewhat through the Library of Congress, um, and a bunch of really neat training websites to try and understand the you know, pre car wash photo, what may have been. Um, it's hard for that type of building in particular but not necessarily specifically to this, uh, is, is this commission or staff have any recommendations for other resources um, to, that maybe we should have overlooked uh, in that regard? I mean, we would like to try and get this working, certainly by approaching both the East and the West in the same way, if we're gonna make those modifications. Um, I, I don't know if there's something that we're not looking at. It, I didn't hear earlier. Did you did you check with the Ohio Historical Society? I, I we can um, we can take a look. Ohio History 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 connection. Connection. Yeah. History connection. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sure they. I know. I get it. <laughs> I know they had. I believe they have some records of the property information as well. Check that out. But that would still be conjecture as to what this was, right. and that's why I don't think that's valid. Right. I'm, I'm going to support what Mr. Foley said as far as my, my opinion is, is less change in appearance, the better. Um, and I'm not sure why the o, OWB entrance being contributed is not being retained as the main entrance. It works fine. I totally agree with you on that. We're, we're just going to guess about this. So I'm, I'm for sticking with what's there because we know it's there. Um, you can propose maybe some changes of the doorway and maybe that window. Um, but essentially, I don't see change in this end, this side of the building. In the same sense, I got the same thing in the back, but you want to put two cars back there. Mm -hmm. My, my position is we don't allow curb cuts. Mm -hmm. You're really going to have to make a case of why logically there was a curb cut there. I think going back to a trolley barn scenario probably was not a curb cut. I'm guessing that whole end of the building was open. Mm -hmm. When it was a trolley barn, you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do with that. I have no answers. This is why the design statement I kind of asked for was, how, what is your overall approach to this? And it may not be that you treat both ends of the building from the same point of departure. 
but why are you departing on one side one way and on the other the other way? Yeah, yeah. and I think that's I think functionally uh, converting this to a residential building required a little bit of thinking about the city park facade logically and in some way that makes sense and the Pearl Alley facade slightly differently, but we want to tie them together as well, best we can. Um, I mean, is there a way to, no, 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 no. you've got a curb cut here, right? Yeah. And, you know, you've got what is historic facade, like it, paint it, whatever, it's historic facade. Is there a way to come in and, and turn into a garage, you know, or something rather than, because we're already talking about putting windows on that side, right? So it's not the public facing part of the building. I mean, I know that probably was difficult, but then you can just leave them both the way they are. I mean, if, if yes, at some point cars rolled in from the street into that facility, they're saying yep. that treatment uh, and, and how to relate that or make sense of that from one side to the other. If, if this old world facade, facade is the question to deal with there. The overall bizarre facade, and we can probably work through it, but you know, all of that additive stuff is well within the right way. So we just talk to the city about that. That's right. Yeah, we're trying to that. Oh yeah, the walls and all that stuff are up there. Yep. I'd make the comment about the, the curb cut comment. There is a section in the guidelines about curb cuts um, and the, the items to consider. Does it follow historic neighborhood patterns? Uh, is the historic site or neighborhood fabric affected? Is the new curb cut from an alley? Is existing on street parking retained as a result of the new curb cut or will it be removed? Obviously, there's no parking there currently. Yeah. Um, pedestrian flow not being impeded by the curb cut and new open slope apron should not overlap with sidewalks. Just just a point of question too is that that curb actually looks to be concrete. Yeah. Stuff. Is that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying it's, you can't get there. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's we have have this argument a couple of times a year about people running curb cuts. Yeah, and I don't want any fuel. <laughs> yes, and, and look what you did on Pearl Alley at this. Yes, right. And I think. Those guidelines are outlining possible ways to get there. Yep. Um, yep. But it's for specific situations. And the conversion sort of pulls, starts us down that path. Do you think that driveway to the left of that back was, is filled in? I'm looking at how the wall is parched on the cottage and everything else. Uh, to the left? It's north. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What was the question? Sorry. For that cottage on the Yeah, it looks like it's been elevated. It's been filled. Uh the grade between the buildings is has over time risen. Mm. Uh part of the proposal in this is uh to take down the build up of that grade yeah, with okay. the interior court and take that back down because it's almost for the window sills. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. And it actually goes up above the first floor level in the care in the uh, trolley board. And it, it's just been built up over time. And if we want to take that back down. That's uh, for a lot of the other reasons, or a lot of the other things that we're proposing. Yeah, uh, another question, just in for conversation to. Um, you know, we're proposing to fix and uh, repair the entire slate roof on the cottage on City Park, replace the asphalt shingle on the cottage on Pearl with slate, and the metal roof on the trolley barn. Um, is there a situation where there's another material for the trolley barn that could be considered besides slate? Is there currently? Old slate. 
Also, they don't like them currently. But. And in the uh, inspection report, there's an analysis of that. So, you want the slate low? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like we use approved asphalt trims. Okay. See why we wouldn't let you. As we always do. <laughs> yeah, I can't see why this would be an exception. Okay. Have a two two uh, opinion submission. Oh, here's the other thing. Sorry, I just remembered. Uh, on the city park uh, cottage, you know, the main entrance to the proposed home uh, is through five five five. We're proposing certainly to keep the apertures, the windows, doors in the city park cottage. Um, the from the commission's point of view, uh, will we? If those are just non -fun non functioning doors, do you, will we need to uh, keep the steps or or recreate the steps in front of those doors as part of this? Uh, that's typically what you want. Yeah. Okay. I, I just want to make sure yeah. we're showing. So you can, if that's okay. still reads as a door. Yeah. Okay. You can uh, place in front of it. And get yes. On the steps. Yeah. Are they stone steps there? Or are they concrete and wood? Yeah. But there's not a. It looks like at least they were replaced. Yeah. To be the same. Okay. I just gotta say because we're looking at that drawing right now. That is a hell of a master closet. Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> It's yes. the, the master closet is bigger than the bedroom. <laughs> it is quite large. <laughs> that it is seems cool. like that is cool. Sad. <laughs> okay, the Sorry. connector. That's okay. <laughs> the connector comments were good. Um, and I think you know, with a lot of the other things, certainly we're we're on board. I mean, in the end, we certainly want this to be a beautiful project for the neighborhood for our clients. Um, it's just ringing out this, this trolley bar brooch to make this function as home for someone uh, and meet, you know, as many uh, zoning and functional guidelines as we can. Yeah, the crux is those elevations. That's, that's it. Well, that, not the transparency between that yeah. connection. Yeah, which obviously means you're changing floor plan. Yeah. But seems like you it might be okay. Yeah. Any just thoughts at this point, just about the proposal package as far as the, the windows in the cottages? Proposing replacement with a uh, approved window. Uh, oh, they, they're original in there right now? I think so. Uh, when you take a look at some of yeah, the shape, usually we get a report shows that they can't be restored or they're beyond, which is. Or, or we just say we're refurbishing. Yeah. I found getting new sashes made for the existing window frames is cheaper than having Pella come in and put new windows in. Oh. I'll make the comment if you look at the the current photo and you look back to the city park uh, historic photo the historic photo is showing two over two on the first floor and six over six mm -hmm. on the second floor yeah it looks like they're one over ones now so yeah. probably hmm. not original right there yeah there was also uh, shutters on those upper yeah. uh, doors it's also the fifties, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but they um, they they would have been contributing. One last thing, just to, we consider this facade too, because I I think the feedback has been good. I think that we are getting a better idea of the you know the boundaries uh, that we need to try and work with. But if we're turning this into residence, um, do you think that we would be permitted to? Remove the sign from the front of the building. So the hanging will go. Yeah. yeah. I I would say yes. It never goes back. Yeah. 
that yeah. makes game of events are also false they may have some time to yeah okay later than the yeah. year earlier as well so I want to clarify, you were talking about taking the sign and all the apparatus that hangs it down, or just the sign itself? Well, the, the bracket and everything, I assume, if you have to it, yeah. Back, back to the windows. Um, when you go to replace, if we can all agree that those are not the original windows, um, you do have evidence for doing back to six over six or okay. two over twos. Okay. And looking at that, uh, the black and white photo it, from the BF photo, it almost appears that there may be a two over two on the first floor window on that property. It looks like the second floor windows are knocked out in that photo. Uh, that page right there, yep. bottom left corner. Yep. Uh, yeah. on that picture, it looks yeah. almost like a two over two. It's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Piece. yeah. I mean, for, the, for those two, it's very clear our path to sort of, you know, fix those up. Yeah. You know, that is maybe less greater, right? I, I think that we want to use all of that evidence to, to sort of bring those to a certain point cleaned up. Is the louver on the east elevation of the trolley barn real? Yeah. Okay, it's just apply. Yeah, on okay. both of them, it's just a reply <laughs> detail. Both the sons. Most Larson. Yeah. Exterior decorating. I just wonder when it was at. Okay. Well, um, I would say if you do take that sign off, I don't know if the society or somebody could oh, for sure. to make it safe somewhere. Yeah. Cause it's wild. <laughs> They had to repurpose it, put it on their building. Yeah. Um, staff would like to add for the window question. Yeah. Uh, just when you're ready for that, just to take photos, detailed photos of all the windows. I mean, it just kind of goes through. And, and that will help. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Ohio historical connection. Uh, history connection. History connection. The big brutalist building on 70. Right next to the curb. I love the building. Yep. Fire and iron, right? Yep. The, uh, okay. The game. Thank you, guys. Thank yeah. you. It's a cool project. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. I'm going to get it right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. No action necessary. That was conceptual. Uh, that's in the, we have one item left on the agenda. All business. Mm -hmm. All that one in item GV-21-06-055-710-714 South 5th Street. Come on up. And once you're all settled, can you please both raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and the truth. Yes. And please state your name for the record, ma'am. Carolyn Gifford. Thank you. Steve Gifford. Thank you very much. Morgan. This project request is all business. Proposed work description application was approved on June 1st, 2021 for a new detached garage, exterior alterations, and a change of use from a duplex to a single family. Owners were approved to install hardy board siding with five and a quarter inch exposure. Owner has begun installation of a faux grain hardy board in lieu of a smooth and has received a code violation. Staff analysis, the construction of a new garage was approved in June with the drawings stated, stating hardy board siding with five and a quarter inch exposure. At the hearing, Commissioner Thiel asked applicant Julie Bullock, who is the architect on this application, and Julie, it complies with all the requirements of the guidelines regarding trims and all that stuff. Julie Bullock replied, yes, I believe so. And this can be heard on the June 2021 recording at timestamp 320-32. Staff had also contacted Ms. Bullock earlier this week uh, to discuss the matter and when, um, and when drafting those drawings, she intended for the noted hardy board to be smooth and follow the guidelines, which is a question, sorry. She stated yes and told the owners the same after, uh, after hearing. 
learning about the citation. Uh, after hearing, or, oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> after learning about the citation, staff has reached out to owners discussing the matter, informing them of the excerpt from the German Village Guidelines Amendments, artificial citing, saying that the finish should be smooth and not to imitate wood grain. Staff recommends approval of any all clarifications to be submitted to HBO staff review and approval prior to issuance of a certificate with conditions that the Hardy board siding on the new garage be smooth in lieu of the faux grain texture of Hardy board. Per the required standards, as indicated, the amendments of German Village Guidelines Ordinance Number 2221 to 2004, adopted 2005. Basis for German, oh my gosh, base for staff recommendation. <laughs> Sorry about that. German Village Guidelines Amendments, artificial siding, page 174. The finish should be smooth or brushed, uh, never wood grain. German Village Guidelines, new buildings, residential, commercial materials, page 111. New, new materials should not attempt to replicate or imitate other materials. Um, and it's consistent with CC 3116.12, standards for new construction, letter G. The choice of material, texture, and color of the facade of the structure should relate attractively to and be tempered by the predominant material, texture, and color of adjacent and visually related structures. Simplicity is preferable. And letter M. Anything else to add? Um, well, if we could uh, get right into the um, reason for the appeal and um, a request for exemption. It's it, going back to all of the stated uh, COA approvals that we received last year in May and August for roof shingles, cut sheets for windows and doors, paint colors, all those things. We assumed that the certificate of, of appropriateness that that we received um, on sheet three, which is it's stamped, and it says clearly that the Hardy Plank, Hardy Plank or Hardy Board siding with five and a quarter exposure, um, it doesn't specify smooth or wood grain, it doesn't specify any type of finish, um, that that was all that was required in order to get the COA. Um, so we're, we're not trying to get the commission to allow textured siding in the, uh, in the future. Um, it's just uh, simply, our assumption, which was incorrect, we're actually just asking for an exemption in this case, because we're almost finished putting the siding up on the garage. Um, so yeah, when we when we came to get the COA approved, we submitted the uh, brochures for the windows and the doors and uh, I believe that's all in here too. Shingles, but no one ever brought up anything about the siding. So when we got the approved plans and it just says party board five and a quarter inch, that's what we want with. The contractor asked me specifically, do you want smoother texture? And said, I don't care there's texture. I mean, I, I really had no preference. I had a 50-50 shot <laughs> and I got it wrong. Um, but I, I, I don't see that it was clearly communicated that that's what it was supposed to be when everything else was detailed out as to what we needed. And we hear to all those, we had no, we didn't realize that there was a requirement. Just, you know, in my opinion, if it was, it should have been detailed out as well. It should have said soon on the approved plans. And then another reason that we're here is if we would, if we're forced to make the change now, obviously significant cost and material and labor to tear that down, can't get credit for Turning stuff that's been installed already. And I think when Julie made that comment back in, was that in May, I think it was a true statement at the time. Because um, at that sure, point, we okay. had picked out our shingles, we had picked out our windows. We didn't pick out the side until three weeks ago. Julie's no longer, I mean, Julie, we do, we haven't retained her, we just retained her, you know, to get us the design process. The design process. Right. Um, so, you know, the statement she made, I think, was correct. Or typically, would we you know we ask for an application to have all the, the product data typically? I, I don't, when was this one? This oh. was uh, June 2021. Um, I was on staff at that time. Yeah. So it was right before I started. Because um, I know from my current experience on a 
on a similar project, you've asked for all that stuff to be submitted to clarify this. I'm sorry, I know this is a little bit off topic of your, but I want to make sure we don't end up in a situation again, you know, so that things are clarified so that applicants know exactly what they're supposed to do. But, but so we are asking for all those cut sheets and clarifications on all those items now, right? Yes. Um, yes. I mean, for, for the guidelines for this one, you know, um, we do recommend the smooth siding. Um, I'm not sure if Julie had that in mind and just did not add that to the drawing at the time. Um, and if that was just kind of under the same umbrella of understanding it would be smooth and smooth. Um, but yes, for the, the past application, I requested for the detailed information just to make sure it all falls within the guidelines. I hope that answers your question. It does. Answer. This is just okay. a, okay. It's a sucky situation. And I understand yeah. where you are. Ignorance of the laws doesn't get you off the hook. Number one. Number two, okay, it wasn't in there, but Julie said it was everything was compatible, so she certified it. You didn't retain her, so you're on your own. I'm sorry, I think it needs to be taken off and put made smooth. So can I ask you where is it when after this happened, I started doing some digging and I see in the uh, amendments to City of Columbus Architectural Review and Commission Guidelines, is that where it states that we should have known that it was smooth? This is in the, the German Village Guidelines, uh, page 174 of the guidelines. And that ordinance is the same as the amendments yes. to the guidelines? Um, it's just numbered differently. So there is a section uh, just for German Village. On, I'm not sure what page for the ordinance, um, but it does have that same section. That's within the German Village Guidelines, page 174. So just to help. So it is that. codified. So the guidelines, I guess, could, like my question is what I'm looking at here doesn't include German Village. If you, um, if you go back a couple of pages, uh, Carolyn, I believe it is. It's so separate it's, for some strange reason. I'm not sure why. Okay. City, but, city code section 3119.27 references German Village typical architecture, architectural characteristics. And at the end of that section, uh, state salt construction, reconstruction, alteration, et cetera, et cetera, uh, conform, compatible with the guidelines for German Village adopted by the commission, approved and published by the standards. So it, it's the, the the German Village guidelines are codified in city code. It's kind of following the string of stuff, essentially. If that answers your question. Yeah. Um, so this. This is one of the hard, awkward situations of the commission. Um, we, we typically approach these situations as if, it, if this was coming before us as an application, as installed, would it be something we'd approve. Um, and whether we do or not is, is up for a vote. Uh, if we don't approve, uh, there are other courses of action that you can take after the fact. Um, there are Economic hardship options, which are defined under city code 316, 3116.15. Um, we, we typically as a commission, well, we, we shouldn't as a commission take economic hardship into consideration on the first appeal for the first ruling. It can be heard on appeal. Um, there's also the ability to go to the board of commission appeals, um, which applicants have done in the past on situations where the commission feels that we, we cannot approve it by doing our due diligence, but we've been overruled in the past. So that is another option for me to, to, to take. Um, I think the first step is to come to us. Come to us first. And then if we reject it, then you take it to the board. Then it opens up your options of, yeah. of, of appeal. Um, and don't take offense. If, we won't take offense if you appeal. No. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is, it is your right all. to do. Um, so and that's the kind of rock and a hard place. We're stuck yeah. in between as commissioners because yeah. we're bound to, to enforce the guidelines, right? And as we interpret them, right? And but we understand how sucky them. Also, it sounds like delays as well. Unfortunately, yes. Right. Um, we're nearing the completion of the project. So I, I will make a comment looking at the photos that were provided and looking at the application that was approved. Um, on the application itself, page 15, 
of what is on here. The soffit condition that was approved. Uh, it's not a vertical cut soffit. It's a 45 degree cut soffit for the half round gutters and the, the, the uh, fascia under the soffit was um, half inch beadboard soffit. So the photo of what was installed, if that's the current state, is showing a vertical cut fascia and a flat underneath with vents. So that's not complying with what was approved. That's on your contractor. Yeah. So you might want to have a conversation with the contractor on that one. So, so, so would, that would be another code violation. We need to get that fixed. Technically, yeah. But luckily, for that one, you have drawn clearly that shows it. Right. You could say, "Hey, you didn't do what was supposed to, you're supposed to do." So, to my my personal stance on this, seeing that there is that condition and the the faux finish condition, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to approve based upon everything we just talked about. Um, but I do would state that you can definitely appeal on multiple grounds. But I don't think the soffit condition is going to get further down. Right. Yeah, the soffit, I yeah. totally agree that we need to have that rectified because that was in the plans that were approved. Mm -hmm. Again, you just go back to those, it wasn't clear as to the <clears throat> texture and soffit. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because then we did get that code violation. The woman, the code enforcement officer that brought over the Violation talked to him for a while. He said she did. She said, I didn't know anything about that. He was not quite sure how you would know. The, the Hardy board, the, the faux finish on the Hardy board specifically, that has been a very sore subject throughout the village over the years. We, we've done a lot of test cases on the Hardy material itself. Um, and smooth as all has definitely been the, the, mis, the, the statement that we, we followed through with. And Hardy material itself. It has not been approved aside from just ugly garages. So there's probably a lot of eyes on that kind of material throughout the village. So whoever called the code enforcement. The the other recourse you may have, and the, the contractor on the commission may throw a shoe at me. <laughs> I, I don't know if you signed a contractor written contract or if you signed like an AIA contract, but a lot of typical contractor language says that the contractor will comply with all codes and ordinances required for the project. This is a code and ordinance. So as a homeowner, and you, you, you're relying on the expertise of those people that you hire, this contractor should have the expertise <laughs> to understand that, that, that he's working in German Village, he needs to understand what, what is required and what is not required. I'd also say it's sometimes it's a good idea to retain your architect for quality assurance during construction. Because it's cheaper to have them do that than end up in a situation like this. You're ready to throw your shoes on me. Said you've had that pushed against you. We have. <laughs> we have. So I don't know. I don't know who works your kind of what kind of contract it is, but you might investigate that because it might be helpful for you. So all that said, um, we could take a vote. I just want, I just want to make sure we, we made you aware of all the things we got to take into consideration in case the vote doesn't go your way to let you know that it's not the end of the world. There are, there are options you can pursue. What the path forward is. Yeah. So uh, I guess we can take a vote unless there's anything else you would like to bring up or, or discuss. I don't think so. Again, the reason we're here is right, simply to ask. Um, you're right. Our ignorance on this is is no excuse. And so we're prepared to do whatever it takes to move forward. And you're not the first one, and you're not the last. Well, and I, I guess I would re request just after we've gone through this that it, it would be helpful if it was made to be clearer in the future. Well, I'm going to point out the fact that I asked your architect about this, and the fact that it was not on your drawings, etc. There's some responsibility there somewhere. You, I'm sorry, you yeah. asked her about what? If everything in this project was per the guidelines, et cetera, because we've gotten she was, When she said that, that, that was a true statement at the time. Because we understand anything out the time. Right. Typically, that, that would be noted on the drawings. Yeah. yeah. So it was finished. We've gotten caught where things were just slipped through mm -hmm. unintentionally, but things weren't caught. 
and we've ended up with stuff that's non-compliant we can't go back on because we've ended up with the damage and this is to existing structures the damage is done in like these we can't being a painting stone foundation it's really So if there's no other questions, is there a motion? Uh, motion to approve old business item, doesn't have a number, uh, 710 South Fifth Street. Is there a number for you to read? Uh, GD 210605. Thank you, that one. <laughs> is there a second? Second. Is there any questions on the motion? All those in favor? All those against? So motion is denied. Um, I stated there are several courses of appeal and, and Morgan can put you down the right path of those and you're free to select which one you like to take. Okay. So. And, and I would say, I mean, so I, we have an application. My firm has an application that that's on, on right now. I was mentioning before Morgan as opposed to previous staff is doing a much better job of following up. She's asking for, okay, you said the site is this, create provide cut sheets to clarify so that these things don't happen. Yeah. So again, so thank you, Morgan, for, for that. HB is doing a much better job now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Carolyn Steve, so I will send a denial packet to you after this. Neil will close uh, paperwork just at the next step since what's discussed this evening. Um, and he'll become certified mail and he will return an appeal then uh, that would be included in the packet. And I'll include this conversation just to FYI of what's coming next. Okay. Right. Good. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and for the record, I think the code to read in for that is 31197, which is the German Village Arctic Characteristics, page 174 under specifications for artificial siting, bullet point one. Yes, thank you. Thanks for everything. Right. Uh, that's the end of the agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? I so move. Is there a second? <laughs> second. Question of the motion. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Can't yes, always it. Can't vote against it. <laughs>